Wrestling class. I hope you had a well-rested weekend. We are going to get started with the opening quiz. We'll take about five minutes to complete that, and then we will get started with today's lesson. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, time is up. If you would, please hand your paper to the person next to you. And do not have your own paper in your possession, please. We're going to go ahead and grade the opening quiz. Looking at number one, uh, it states, when given a matrix with dimensions m by n, what do the m and n represent? If we think about last class period, we had m by n. You may see it in the form of a 3 by 2, a 1 by 4. These are just different examples. But what do the m and n represent? First, the m is going to represent your rows. n is going to represent your columns. It's very important that you remember this because it will come in handy once we start the topic of matrix multiplication in just a few minutes. So M is going to be your rows, N is going to be your columns. That's number one. Number two, it states when adding and subtracting matrices, can the dimensions be different or do they always have to be the same? The correct answer to this is they always have to be the same. This is because you have to make sure each entry is going to line up uh, with another one. So if we have our matrix A here, and we have matrix B here. Let's just do uh, two by twos. So we'll have one, three, four, and zero. Two, four, five, and five. So if we're adding these two matrices, we're going to put our answer right here. Each one of these entries have to match up with each other. So if we're looking at this one. This entry here is the first row, first column. It has to match up with the first row, first column from the second matrix. And that's how we get our 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. This first row, second column has to match up with the first row, second column in the second matrix. That's how we get our 3 plus 4. 7. 4 plus 5, 9. 0 plus 5, 5. Now, let's say, for example, we didn't have this second column here. So we're looking for a solution, but here we have a 2 by 2, and over here we have a 2 by 1. So the dimensions do not match up. We have a 2 by 2 and a 2 by 1. What's going to happen? Uh, we look at our solution, uh, which we don't really know what this is going to look like, but let's just try to solve this. Uh, we have first row, first column, 1. First row, first column, 2. That's easy. We have a 3. We get here. We're on the first row, second column. We have a first row, but there's no second column. We cannot complete this operation. Okay, so we cannot get a solution to that. So that will answer number two. And when you're adding and subtracting matrices, the dimensions must always be the same. Now, don't get confused because once we get later, uh, once we target matrix multiplication, uh, the rules will change a little bit. But for addition and subtraction of matrices, the dimensions must be the same. Okay? Moving on to number three. Number three states, Please identify each property of addition. They all apply to matrix computation. So let's look at that first one, which is uh, just that I, the first I. We have A plus B is equal to B plus A. Now if we think back to the last class period, we did identify the different properties of addition. Uh, that apply to numbers, but they also apply to matrices. So this first one here, if we look at what happened, the A's and the B's switched. So if we think about the word commute, 
uh, that's typically when somebody is going to a different place. So if we think about commutative, we think about the word commute. That's how we will look at this property here, say that the A and Bs have moved. So this is our commutative property of addition. Okay? Uh, the second I there, the two, number two, we have our A plus B plus C. These are all matrices, by the way, not, not, not just numbers, not just constants. They are matrices. We have our A plus B in parentheses plus C is equal to A plus B plus C in parentheses. Now, if you think about the word associate, uh, who you may be friends with, who you hang out with, this is where we're going to uh, link that word up with associative. If we look here, A and B are kind of linking up and leaving C out, so they associate with one another. Over here, we see that it's equal to B and C, which are associated with one another. So that's how we remember that when we have these parentheses, A plus B plus C is equal to A plus parentheses B plus C, we'll think about the word associative. You should already have these in your notes from last class, but we will, uh, we will go ahead and just review these now. Uh, the last one, we have our C parentheses A plus B is equal to C times A plus C times B. Now we've seen this before. When we have been working with different equations, uh, we might have a 2 parentheses x plus 2, and we know that that is a 2x plus 4. This is going to be our distributive property. So basically we're going to take this lowercase c, which is uh, our constant, and multiply it times each of these matrices, okay? So we have C parentheses matrix A plus B is equal to that same constant times A, matrix A, plus the same constant times matrix B. So this is our distributive. These are the properties of addition uh, that do apply to matrix computation. Looking at number four, we have two matrices, A and B, and what we need to do is add them in number four. So first of all, let's look and see if the dimensions are the same. Yes, they are. We have a two by three added to another two by three. All right, so our matrix A is 3, 4, 2, 6, 2, 7. Our matrix B over here is 5, 0, 2, negative 1, 3, 4. And we are adding these two matrices. So, we have the same dimensions, so we can carry this out. We'll go ahead and start our solution box here, our solution matrix here, which is A plus B. And we'll just look at the first entries, which is the 3 plus 5 is 8. The next entry is 4 plus 0, 4. Third entry is 2 plus 2, 4. We move down to the second row, and we have this negative 1 here. We don't want it to throw us off. It's just basic uh, addition of negative numbers. So 6 plus negative 1, that's the same as 6 minus 1, which is 5. 2 plus 3, 5. And finally, 7 plus 4, which is 11. So our solution is going to be this matrix here. Moving down to number 5, our last problem. We are using the exact same matrices, only this time will be subtracted. Okay? So we'll do the exact same process. Line up each entry with each other. 3 minus 5, negative 2, that's right. 4 minus 0, 4. 2 minus 2, 0, exactly. 
6 minus negative 1. We don't want to get tripped up here. It's just like we, when we carry out uh, any other uh, subtraction of a negative number. We subtract a negative number that's automatically going to be plus. So we have 6 plus 1, which is 7. 2 minus 3, negative 1. That's exactly right. 7 minus 4. Alright, go ahead and please hand in your quizzes, just pass them to the front of the room, and we will have them on the desk right here to your left. So just go ahead and pass them in that direction. Today's lesson, we'll go ahead and take out our notes. It's going to be about matrix multiplication. Alright, so last class we targeted the addition and subtraction of matrices. This class period we will talk about multiplying them. So before we get into multiplying a matrix times a matrix, we want to talk about scalar multiplication. Now this word scalar uh, we've seen before and basically all it means is a constant. So we're taking a constant, multiplying it times a matrix. So let's do this example here. If our matrix is A, we'll just start with a 2 by 2. 2, 1, 3, 4. And we multiplied a scalar times that matrix. So here we'll have 2 times matrix A. What is that going to look like? Basically, we're just going to have that 2 multiplied times the entire matrix. So 2, 1, 3, 4. And our answer is going to be 2 times each entry that is within the matrix A. So 2 times 2, 4. We're going to make sure that they're in the same position. 2 times 1, 2. 2 times 3, 6. And 2 times 4, 8. So our 2 times the matrix A would be equal to 4, 2, 6, 8. And that's all there is to it. Uh, what I would like you to do now is first we'll do one more example. We'll do one more example. So let's say we have matrix B, which is a, let's go with a 2 by 3. All right, so 2, 3, 0, 1, 4, 6. And our problem is 3 times B. So we're going to have 3 times that entire matrix. Every entry is going to be multiplied times 3. So our solution is going to look like this. 3 times 2, 6. 3 times 3, 9, exactly right. 3 times 0. 0, yep. Yeah. 3 times 1, 3. 3 times 4, 12. And 18. 3 times 6 is 18. So now what I want you to do is uh, go ahead and flip over that index card that you just got handed at the beginning of class and practice the first four examples. Go ahead and do the first four examples. <laughs> Let's go ahead and look at example number one, in which you were given a matrix A, and it was actually a 3 by 2, and it was 2, 1, 3, 2, 4, 6. Okay, so this was your 3 by 2. And basically what they asked you to do was to multiply a scalar of 3, of that constant 3, times the matrix A. So we're going to multiply that constant times every entry in the matrix. Okay, so our solution is going to look like what? Three times two, six. 
3 times 1, 3, 3 times 3, 9, 3 times 2, 6, 3 times 4, 12, and finally 3 times 6, 18. So the solution to example number 1 is this matrix here. Now pay attention to uh, example number 4. Uh, hopefully you didn't get tripped up by it. What they asked you to do was carry out two scalar multiplication operations and add them. So I believe the first matrix A was uh, 1, 3, 5, 6. And then that matrix B was a 2, 1, 3, 1. Okay, so this is a 2 by 2. We're looking at the dimensions. And this is also a 2 by 2. So when we're thinking about adding and subtraction, before we even continue, we want to make sure that those dimensions are exactly the same. So we have a 2 by 2 and another 2 by 2, which means we can add them. All right, but what they ask you for is 4 times A plus 3 times B. So before we can carry out that operation, we have to figure out what this 4A looks like. What matrix is that? So we have 4 times each entry in the matrix. So 4 times 1, right? 4 times 3, 12. 4 times 5, 20, okay? And finally, 4 times 6, 24. That's right. All right? So we're adding this 3B matrix. So that's the constant 3 times everything in the B matrix. Okay, so every entry in the B matrix has to be multiplied times 3. So 3 times 2, 6. 3 times 1, 3. All right, 9 and 3. Okay, so now that we know what 4A and 3B look like, we can go ahead and add those two together to get our solution. Okay, so we have, remember the entries have to add, uh, match up with each other. So that 4 plus 6, 10. 12 plus 3, 15. 20 plus 9, 29. And finally, 24 plus 3, 27. Hopefully you didn't get tripped up on this, and this will be your solution, uh, your solution matrix. So yeah, that will wrap up scalar multiplication, and we can get to the real meat of matrix multiplication. So before we get into uh, actually working out examples, there are a couple of things that you need to know about matrix multiplication. And the first is uh, that there is a certain rule that applies when you're multiplying two matrices. So let's say we have a matrix A and a matrix B. Let's say A is a 2 by 3. Well, we'll just go ahead and say M by M. We don't know what it is yet. M by M. And over here we have M by M. M1, N1, M2, N2, just to show that there are two different matrices. Now, when we are multiplying matrices, we cannot continue for it. We cannot carry out the operation unless the inner dimensions uh, are matching. So when you, when you line these up side by side, matrix A and matrix B, these inner dimensions have to be the same. So basically, the columns of the first matrix have to match up with the rows of the second matrix. So these have to be the same. Please make sure you get this in your notes. These inner dimensions have to be the same. So let's give an example. If matrix A is a 3 by 2 and B is a 2 by 2, we can multiply them because the columns of the first matrix, this 2, matches the rows of the second matrix. Okay? So yes, 
we can multiply them and we do have a solution to a times b. Okay? Now what if we had a 3 by 2 and a 1 by 2? This 2 is not matching up with this 1. They are not the same. Okay? So we cannot carry out this operation. In those cases we would label impossible. Okay? So these inner dimensions do not match up. When you put them side by side, this two and that one do not match up. It is impossible. Finally, what if we had a 3 by 4 and a 4 by 2? Can those be multiplied? Let's check. 4, 4, they match up? Yes, we do have a solution to matrix A times matrix B. Okay, so that's the first rule that you need to know. The second one is, you can figure out the dimensions to your solution if you look at the outer dimensions. If you look at the outer dimensions, you line them up side by side, matrix A and matrix B, if you look at the outer dimensions, you can figure out what the dimensions to your solution are. So what do you mean? Alright, so let's start off with a 3 by 2 and a 2 by 1. Okay, so first thing we need to do is check if these match. Yes, they do. So now, what is going to be, what are going to be, what's going to be the dimensions to our solution? We look at this 3 and this 1. These are the outer dimensions because they're on the outside. The dimensions of A, B, the uh, matrix A times matrix B is going to be a 3 by 1. 3 by 1. Okay, so the rows of the first matrix and the columns of the second matrix. Okay, let's look at a different one. Let's look at a 4 by 2 and a 2 by 5. Okay, first things first, check those inner dimensions. Yes, alright, so what are the dimensions of our solution? 4 by 5. Okay? So we'll get into why these have to match up once we get into a, a, a later example. But now that you know the first two rules, I'm going to let you know a little secret. And that is that you can have swag in mathematics. Especially with matrix multiplication. So how can you have swag with matrix multiplication? Well, I'll show you. It's actually an acronym. They didn't tell you this. But SWAG is an acronym for matrix multiplication. Alright? The S stands for, I'm going to draw a small box here. It's a checkbox. That stands for, should we go further? This is that initial test when you have two matrices. You check those inner dimensions. Do they match up? Yes or no. It's either a yes or a no. If they match up, yes, you can do it. If they don't, it's impossible. You can smash the whole thing. All right, W. What are the dimensions of our solution? I'll draw a bigger box for that. So what are the solution dimensions? Alright, the A, I'll draw an even bigger box, we are going to add a picture. Okay, it's very important that we visualize our answer before we even get the numbers with matrices. Okay, so we want to know what our solution matrix looks like in a picture that we draw a raw form of the answer. And then finally, that G stands for give me the answer. Okay? And this is how we have swag with matrix multiplication. So let's say we had matrix A, which was a 3 by 4, times matrix B, which is a 4 by 2. 
So we'll go through the swag checklist. Should we go further? Let's check those inner dimensions. The four and the four match up. Yes, okay, we can go further. Next, what are the solution dimensions? Let's check those outer dimensions. So a three by two. Add a picture. That's the A. We need to add a picture. What does a three by two matrix look like? All right, so that's three rows, two columns. Okay, so we don't know what the numbers are. We'll just put dots where the entries are. We know that this is what our solution matrix is going to look like. This is the raw form of the answer. And finally, give me the answer. This is the part we haven't gotten to yet, and we're about to get into it right now. So let's remember the swag che checklist. I'll write it here, and we'll actually go through it with each example. Okay, let's look at our first example. So if we have a matrix A here, matrix B here, this is going to be a 2 by 1 multiplied times a 1 by 2. Let's do a 1 by 3, actually. I want to start off too simple. Okay, so let's look at our swag checklist. First, S. Should we go further? Check those inner dimensions. One and one? Yes, sir. We can keep going. W. What are our solution dimensions? We look at these outer ones, outer dimensions. Two by three. Okay, so A times B is going to be a two by three. Okay? A. Add a picture. We want to add a picture. What does this 2 by 3 matrix look like? Alright, so that's two rows, three columns. So we don't know what the numbers are. We'll put dots just to represent the entries. Two rows, three columns. That's the raw form of our answer. Okay, so let's say A is 2, 1. And matrix B is 1, 3, 5. Okay, so we have our two matrices, and we want to multiply them together. So A times B. All right. So first things first, the reason we want to have this raw picture, which we can go ahead and check that off, we want to have this raw picture so we can figure out how to carry out the operation of matrix multiplication. So let's first look at this entry here. This is the first row. First column entry. First row, first column. First row, first column. So what we want to do is take the first row of the first matrix, multiply it times the first column of the second matrix. So this is first row, first column. So we're going to do the first row of the first matrix, multiply it times the second row, I mean the first row, I mean the first column of the second matrix. So 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, the second entry here is the first row, second column. So we have the first row of the first matrix multiplied by the second column of the second matrix. So 2 times 3, 6. Alright, this third entry, first row, third column. So we'll do the first row times the third column. So 2 times 5. 10. Go ahead and close that off. Alright, let's look at the remaining entries here. Now, this entry here is a second row, or a second row, first column entry. This is a second row, first column entry. So we're going to do the second row of the first matrix times the first column of the second matrix. So 1 times 1 is 1. This entry here, we know we're going to put here, this entry is the second row, second column. So we do the second row of the first matrix times the second column of the second matrix. So 1 times 3, 3. And finally, we look at our last entry here. That's the second row, third column. So we'll do the second row of the first matrix times the third column of the second matrix. So 1 times 5. Is five. 
and we have our solution. Give me the answer. G, we can check off. Alright, you can even write swag on your paper if you want to. Alright, swag. Okay, so this is why it's very important for us to go through our checklist so it'll make this process seem a lot easier. If we have this raw form of the answer, we can get an idea of how we're supposed to carry out each computation to finally get to our matrix uh, solution here, which is A times B is equal to 2, 6, 10, 1, 3, 5. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to a more difficult example. Okay, now we're going to get into a more difficult example. So here we have matrix A and B. Uh, the dimensions of this matrix A is a 2 by 2. We'll make sure to note that. And also here we have a 2 by 3, 2 rows, 3 columns. So if we're talking about adding or multiplying the matrices, then we have to go through our swag checklist. First things first, should we go further? That means we need to check these inner dimensions. Do they match up? Two and two, two here, two here. Yes, the columns of the first matrix line up and match with the rows of the second matrix. So yes, we should go further. W, what are the solution dimensions? Remember, we look at these two outside numbers here. So 2 by 3. A times B is going to be a 2 by 3. Okay? So we have W checked off. A, add a picture. What does a 2 by 3 matrix look like? That's what we need to display right here. So we have two rows, three columns, and these were the entries. We don't know what the numbers are, so we'll just represent them as dots, as before. Check that out. Finally, give me the answer. Okay? Now, the example before was a lot uh, more simple because we only had one column with the matrix A to work with. This time we have two. The process is, is the exact same, though. Okay? So what we're going to do here is write out AB open up our matrix. Okay, The process is the same, only we have more entries to work with. So this entry here and our answer that we're looking for is going to be first row, first column. So we're going to have this entire first row of the first matrix multiplied by the first row of the second matrix because this is the first row, first column. First row, first column. Okay. So we'll start with the first two entries. So 2 times 1. Okay? But you're thinking, we have more entries. What do we do with them? Do we go to the next position? Do we go to the next entry? No. We're still working with row 1, column 1. Okay? So we're here at 2 times 1. We want to move to the next entry here in the first matrix and down to the next entry here in the second matrix. It's going to be easy if you use your fingers just before, uh, so you can get the process down. So we have 2 times 1, and we're going to add 3 times 2. Okay, and when, once we add these together, that's going to give us our, col our row 1, column 1 entry. First row, first column entry. That's what that's going to be. Moving on to our first row, second column entry. We're going to have the first row of the first matrix, but now we're going to be multiplying it times the entire second column of the second matrix. Okay, so we'll have, we put our fingers back up again, 2 times 0, make sure you leave some space so the numbers aren't running together, 2 times 0, and then we'll go to the next entry, plus 3 times 3. Alright, and that'll cover our first row, second column entry. Moving on, first row, third column entry. We're still multiplying the first row of the first matrix, but now we're multiplying it by the third column of the second matrix. Okay, so we're going to have 2 times 4, space again, space again, 2 times 4, and then we'll move to the next entry, plus 3 times 3. 
this is gonna seem a little confusing at first, I know. But if you use your fingers, uh, fingers, it'll help uh, start to get you used to this process. All right. Now, if we're looking at this one, is taken care of. All right. We'll make it a little bigger just to show that we have taken care of it. This entry here. This is the second row, first column. So now, instead of using the first row, this is the second row, first column. So we'll do the second row of the first matrix times the first column of the second matrix. So now we have 1 times 1. Alright, those are the first entries. Move them down and over. Plus 4 times 2. Alright, make sure you are organizing everything on your paper so you won't get confused. The more organized you are, the better you will get this concept down. Okay? And this is going to take some organization at first. It's a brand new concept, and it can get confusing. Alright? So that will take care of our second row, first column entry. Moving on to our second row, second column entry. We have the second row of the first matrix multiplying it times the second column of the second matrix because it's the second row, second column. So we have 1 times 0, make sure you're using space, putting some space in between, plus 4 times 3. Okay, that'll take care of this entry. Finally, we have this second row, this entry here is the second row, third column. So we're going to do the second row of the first matrix, and shift over to the third column of the second matrix. So we have 1 times 4, spacing, 1 times 4, move on to the next entry, plus 4 times 3. Alright, and that'll take care of that entry. Now, once you have all of this taken care of, it's just basic operations, basic mathematical operations to figure out what your answer is going to look like. Okay, so we can actually write this over here to the side. AB is equal to, it's still a 2 by 3, nothing has changed. It's still a 2 by 3, but now we need to figure out uh, what numbers we're going to get. So 2 times 1 is 2, plus 3 times 2 is 6. So 2 plus 6 is 8. Okay? 2 times 0 is, two, is 0, plus 3 times 3, which is 9. So 0 plus 9 is 9. All right? Get to this entry. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 3 times 3, which is 9. So 8 plus 9 is 17. Okay, moving down to the second row. We're down in the second row now. 1 times 1 is 1, plus 4 times 2 is 8. So 1 plus 8 is 9. Here we have 0 plus 12. So 0 plus 12 is 12. And finally, we have 4 plus 12, which is 16. And this is going to be our final answer of matrix A times matrix B. That will complete our swag. We can check it out here. So when we're carrying out these uh, matrix multiplication problems, we want to make sure that we are following uh, these specific steps. That way we can get a glimpse of what our answer is going to be and so we can stay on track. When we're asking should we go further, we may get to a problem where, we don't, where the solution is impossible and we don't need to do anything else. Okay, So that's why this first step is important. Uh, what are the solution dimensions? The W, we want to find out what our answer is going to look like. And these two, these middle two steps are going to keep us on track. When we have a raw form, we have a picture, literally, of what our solution is going to be, and all we have to do is fill in the numbers. If we have that raw form, if we have at least the skeleton version, then it's going to keep us on track as we get into these more intricate operations here, and then you'll find out uh, that the answers are as easy as this here. Okay, so we want to make sure we're staying on track with our steps, okay? And at this time, uh, please go ahead and complete the second four examples. What we're gonna do 
is get into uh, pairs. I want you in pairs this time. And what you will do is just complete the uh, next four examples on that index card. And then we'll move into the assignment. I will be walking around to make sure that you are not confused on certain steps. And peers, if you can help, please do. Let's go ahead and get started. to the assignment if you would uh, place it in the basket on your way out what we will do is do a quick wrap up so when we were talking about matrix multiplication we had scalar multiplication and basically all that was uh, was you had your constant and you multiplied it times the matrix times every entry in that matrix all right and when we were multiplying matrices When we were multiplying matrices, there were four very key steps, and the way that we remembered that was swag. Okay? So should we go further? That's checking those inner dimensions to see is, the, uh, is there a possible solution? Okay? If they do match, if the uh, columns of the first matrix match up with the rows of the second matrix, then yes, you can carry it out, and you can go further. So should we go further is our S. Uh, w, what are the solution dimensions? We want to find out what the dimensions to our solution are. We can look, if we line up our two matrices of the dimensions next to each other, we just look at those outer numbers and we'll find out the dimensions to our solution. A, which was add a picture. We want to get a visual or a skeleton version, a raw version of our um, solution before we even plug in those numbers. Okay, so add a picture. And finally, G, give me the answer. Those are going to be those key steps. And if you follow uh, the first three steps, then that last one uh, should be quite easy in terms of getting the answer. Uh, homework for today is posted here. We have page 364, numbers 2 through 10 even, number 22 and number 26. Uh, I have already posted uh, additional resources in the Facebook group. And you can check out the class channel on YouTube for further assistance. I'm always available uh, for questions if you want to see me after class or during lunch um, or after school or in the morning. All right, and we'll be dismissed at the bell. Have a great afternoon.